What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Lex P. And it's your girl, Dre and Nicole. And you are tuned in to another episode of Poor Minds. Where Drunk Mind Speaks Sober Thoughts. Okay, it's the solo episode. Uh, I cannot believe when you tweeted that tweet, how many people were like, yeah, because it's Poor Minds, just two of y'all. Unless it's Nav or Carlos, they was mad. They be angry when we having guests, and I don't understand. I feel like the guest episode, the guest episodes be great. Yeah, they do be good. Y'all got at guess. least in my opinion, they do. I mean, I think that they be pretty good. But they were saying they feel like whenever we have guests, it don't flow like it flow when it's just me and you. And I guess they feel like it's just us being ourselves, minus the eighty five crew, and that's right. because we so close with them, cool with them. I mean, obviously the conversation gonna flow different because it's like two homegirls talking. That's gonna be a little different. I'm not gonna tell them, you know. About about my shenanigans. What shenanigans? You know my shenanigans. What shenanigans? My shenanigans. I'm confused. I don't know what you're talking about. You, I mean, I'm just saying the conversation between me and you is going to be a little different when we have somebody else because I feel like when me and you just talking, oh, bitch. We talking. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. But I mean, you know, it's all a part of growth. Like, we have to have guests. We have to. It's a part of it. It's a part of our talk show girl. our evolution yes this is not a podcast we say this all the time we are not potters we are not potters we okay. are talk show hosts so what's t girl what you went up to girl you looking sexy in your all white what is you looking sexy i don't have on all white i mean you got on white with the white shoes and the white toes and the white tee Thanks. so icy bars nigga give me in the studio B. okay anyways <laughs> anyways <laughs> i've been good i've been chilling like i've been just relaxing i was enjoying our little few weeks that we had off from yeah recording. from recording yes we had a few weeks off from recording now we back in the studio and i just kind of feel refreshed i mm. feel ready to go i've been back on my shit like i changed my hair up because i wanted to you know go back to a style that's Go back to a style that's more low maintenance for the gym. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to get like some curly hair so I don't have to worry about it. Because y'all, I really was like slacking with not going to the gym. And one thing that I've realized about myself, like I thrive in routine. Mm. Like I thrive when I have a routine. Yeah, I have to have a routine. And like even when it just comes to like simple things. Like I feel like I drink a lot of water. But... It's definitely something I have to think about a lot. Oh, of course. Whenever I'm not working out. Right. But when I'm working out, it's so easy because I go through a whole 50 liter bottle of water in one workout. Thursday. I mean, for real, because you be tired. Yeah. And so I just feel like I'm, I've been back in the gym. like, And I just feel like when my life is together and I have a routine, I'm just a much like happier person. That's for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You'd be happy. Like, so that's what I've been working on. Like. I'm not gonna like lie, I've been I right. I have been in the gym tough every day. And I'm talking about I've been lifting heavy because I'm trying to gain muscle. Mm -hmm. Like I've I've had enough of this cellulite ass and cellulite thighs. I am trying to get I'm trying to give you them legs that look like I could choke a nigga out. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to choke a nigga out. Mm -hmm. Now I did take a little a little one two, a little break. Cause um I went on a little vacation. I did a little one two. Oh wow! Okay, oh. where did you go, girl? I mean, that's why I was low key kind of like. I suck at acting surprised. <laughs> Act surprised. Where did you go? Oh my god, girl! I went to Costa Rica. Ooh. I was Costa Rican. Costa Rican. Rick, I, okay, I know you I was being a Rick, and that's why my hair, that's why I was low-key jealous of you when I called you this morning. Your hair was so fresh and pretty, cause it's giving. <sighs> This hair done been, I went muddy. It's okay though. You crawling look, through the trees. It's okay though. It don't look bad. Nutted it on. Don't look bad. Oh, too far. I mean, it get, hair getting nutted on. Hair too. gets nut. Baby, when I tell you I went to Costa Rica and had a time, it was my first time in Costa Rica. I went on a little vacation. Um, So, y'all know I took shrooms before, but they were kind of like, you know, I didn't feel like I did. I think I got some knockoff shit. Because, baby, when I tell you I did shrooms this time, I did shrooms. And can you, can you elaborate more on that experience? Because oh, I'm like my terrified God. to do shrooms. I feel like whenever I'm high, like whenever I do like smoke weed or 
eat edibles. Yeah. Like, yeah. I be ready to not be high no more. Yeah. So it was shrooms terrify me because I heard it's much more intense. It was very, 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 very intense. I did have an anxiety attack. Thank God I was with someone who I trust. Sure, that no way to convince in. us. Well, well, I'm not trying to convince nobody to do drugs, bitch. I'm a crackhead. I do everything. Give it to me. I'm a try it. But I'm not telling y'all to do it. I'm just telling you my experience. Mm -hmm. So I'm not I was high as fuck. Nigga, I was in there crying. He was like, just calm down. Ooh, I'm glad this nigga really liked me because any I was scaring the hoes, bitch. Oh my god. So can can okay, well, I'm done acting like Okay, I'm okay, okay. I'm gonna tell you but what happened. Can happens. you tell can you tell the people what you were telling me earlier about yes. like shrooms? Yes. Like when people be like killing people. Okay, well, not, maybe not on shrooms. I said just being high <laughs> on some <laughs> drugs. I said maybe acid. Yeah. Because sometimes I, I will say when you take any type of drugs, you're risking of having a bad trip. Yeah. You can have a bad trip. And I've seen stories because y'all know I love like you know uh, true crime and shit like mm -hmm. that so I've seen a lot of stories where you know this is when people say oh my god I was high I don't remember what happened because they be having a bad trip and they be paranoid and they thinking somebody is out to get them and the person out to get them they just end up doing something to the person that's with them mm. and they be like they come down off that high and they be trying to tell the judge I was high I don't know what happened they don't give up they don't care that's yeah. why I say be careful when you try drugs be very careful and also they say if you're going through something mm -hmm. in your real life like you're stressed about something you're in a depressive state please do not take drugs if you're going through that you are supposed to be in a happy space in life i'm very happy career is going well all my friendships are going well you know um uh, the my situation my relationship is good so i was ready to take these drugs and i still was kind of like hold on now i thought i was in a time loop that's what happened to me Mm. I thought I was in a time loop. I thought me and him were missing for three days. And I was like, we've done this moment. I, the day seemed so long. It had only been like an hour. I was like, we did this before. We've been here. And when we wake up in the morning, they're going to know that we were missing. Mm. He was like, uh, let's walk around. Oh, I was scaring the hoes. He was terrified. But he handled that shit like a real man. His face was melting. I thought he was like, I thought we were underwater. I thought I was in the submersive, bitch. I said, not Ocean Gate. I'm finna get imploded, bitch. Baby, I done talked to the little mermaid. Me and Sebastian was kicking it. And this is all, I thought it was going on for hours. I'm telling you, I went on a, I went to some things, bitch. I seen some things. That's crazy. That's crazy. So do you feel like you had like any like epiphanies or like, um, I know a lot of the time when people like do shrooms, they say that they have like these, um, moments of clarity. Yeah. Like these moments of clarity, so, these crazy experiences or moments of enlightenment, awakening. This, I talked about this on the past show. So y'all know I journal, I journal everything. I journal everything. So when I first got high, it hit me pretty quickly. It hit me like an hour in. I was really, really high, so I wasn't really aware. I was aware, but I wasn't. So once I was kind of like used to the feeling, um, we turned some music on, and that's when I kind of started vibing. So I wrote in my journal mm. of what I was feeling. So I was able when I while was you was on the show. Yes, yes, because at that point I was kind of like in it. I was like, okay, I know what's going on now. It took me a while to realize what was going on because I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Mm -hmm. After I got through the part where I realized, okay, maybe I'm not in a time loop and I'm just scaring the hoes. I got out of it and I was like, okay, let me write my journal and write how I feel. So mm -hmm. in that moment, I just realized how grateful I am. I'm like, wow, I'm in Costa Rica and this, the oh my God, the home we were staying in was beautiful. Mm -hmm. I have never stayed in an Airbnb like that in my life. Mm -hmm. And like, shout that out to him. Nice. Oh, because he is a planner. Like, he loves traveling. He's been to so many countries. So he knew exactly where to stay. And mm -hmm. I feel like this is the moment that I manifested for my life. Like, I'm in Costa Rica. I'm on vacation. I'm in this beautiful, beautiful home. I'm high as fuck. Eating good food. Drinking expensive liquor with a fine ass man. Like, right. this is what life is about. I don't give a fuck about my bags and shoes and I don't give a fuck about, I, I like this moment right here. Mm -hmm. So I was able to really just kind of let go of the things that I used to think was important and be like, this is what I work hard for. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I didn't pay for the trip, but I worked hard for it. I mean, you did. <laughs> I, had, I had to 
Sometimes you know? working hard for things isn't always about like monetary value. Sometimes you worked hard like doing internal I, work. I had to go through a lot, yes, internal yeah. work to get this man. To get to this place. This is, and that's a good man. He a good man. We be mm. having a ball. And I will say that was like the highlight of my trip. The fact that it was our first vacation together. Um, I know I'm going to definitely travel with him more. But I learned, I feel like, I kind of like I trusted him. Because like I said, I was high as fuck. And it was a very scary experience. Mm -hmm. If you try shrooms, please do it with somebody that you trust. And that you really fuck with because i felt like if i would have been with anybody if it would have been me and you bitch i trust you but you would be like huh. and I'd be like, huh. let me tell y'all something like this huh. and let me tell y'all something that's why i just be sticking to weed yeah i stick to i hit a little blunt every once in a while i might take a little edible yeah as far as i'm taking things it was, i I'm it just was, gonna live vicariously through others when it come to shrooms it was very i can't wait to hear your story next time very intense oh i'm definitely doing one again no and i can't wait to hear the story like i'm i'm i be very intrigued yeah i'm I definitely do. gonna do it again and then the, not intrigued enough to take it though uh <laughs> And then outside of being high, like I was smoking on the beach. I'm like, I had a moment then. I was just smoking weed. I'm like, damn. So I mean, what else did y'all do? We, uh, like I said, we smoked weed on the beach. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, he like, it was just amazing. Like, I'm like, damn. I was just taking everything in. Like, this is really my life. Like, mm -hmm. I am really that gruff. Period. And I'm living a great Boy. life. And that's how it was. The whole time I'm like, wow, this is what I've done. Like, look at what I've did, done with my life. Like, mm -hmm. I got somebody who is equally yoked. My best friend is that bitch. I'm that bitch. Like, we have, Andy like, my, I just kept taking in my life and thinking, like, how proud my mom would be of me. My sister was like, I'm so happy. Everybody kept DMing me, like, I'm so happy for you. Mm -hmm. You look so happy. But don't get me wrong. Like, he does make me happy. But it was like, I'm happy within myself. Yeah, like outside when you're of him. when you're happy on the inside, it shows. Yeah. Like it, it it shows from within. Like right? if me and him stop talking right now, of course I'm gonna be sad. But yeah. this happiness that I'm finding within myself is like something different. And then yeah. the nigga took me mud and bitch. You know I'm a country bitch. Yeah, you like. We went on the four wheelers, baby. When I tell you I was mud down head to toe, bitch. We was riding mm -hmm. like. We was riding the fucking four wheelers, mudding. It reminded me of being an orange. Then like we went hiking. Like once we got to the point, we went hiking. Mm -hmm. We like swam in a natural pool with the natural waterfalls. It was just beautiful. It was like, I'm really in nature swimming in a natural pool. Right. What the fuck is this? So were y'all like, what's up y'all? It's your girl Lex P. And it's your girl Dre and Nicole. And y'all know Orlando, we owe y'all. So we coming back in a big way. August 10th, Poor Minds is coming to Orlando for our live show. Yes, we coming to Orlando Improv. I cannot wait to see all of y'all faces. You know, unfortunately, we had to reschedule these mm -hmm. days. So I'm super excited to come out and see y'all. Doors open at 7. Yes, and the show starts at 8, and we back bigger than yeah. ever. Let me tell y'all, y'all should be happy because this show, this round, is super lit. So Orlando, August 10th. Doors open at 7. Show starts at 8. Orlando Improv. We'll see y'all and we outside, Buki. Period. Put it on because we coming. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, XP. And it's your girl, Dre and Nicole. And I'm telling y'all, I am here to tell y'all about Chime.com and how important it is to have a good credit score. Look, a lot of people think that a good credit score is not a big deal mm. but it really is mm. like credit is the key to everything yes and dealing with a low credit score is even worse than having no, no credit, credit score. score i mean I, they both pretty bad either way it goes mm -hmm. but i say i'll say this you have access to up to sixty thousand plus fee free atms fee free okay you can get paid up to two days earlier with your direct deposit y'all i'm telling you if you're trying to like start off slow build your credit do things right because you really want to have a secure financial future chime.com is where you need to start i'm telling y'all it really helped me in my beginning stages of getting my credit right you know paying everything on time please pay your stuff on time so what you're going to do is go to chime.com backslash poor minds that's c-h-i-m-e dot com backslash poor minds y'all sign up get your credit right get your money sooner you know you want your funds and all you need you don't even need a lot of money all you need is two hundred dollars a quick two hundred direct deposit come on to now start your account today yes 
The Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card is issued by Stride Bank NA member FDIC. Chime checking account and $200 qualifying direct deposit required to apply. Out of network ATM withdrawal fees may apply. On time payment history may have a positive impact on your credit score. Late payment may negatively impact your credit score. Results may vary. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, XP. And it's your girl, Dre Nicole. And y'all are always asking what we watch and what we tune into. Let me tell y'all something. If you want some drama and some tea, y'all need to watch All the Queen's Men on BET+. Plus. Yes. Oh, Eva Marcel mm. plays Madam yes. on All the Queen's Men. And she don't play. Very cutthroat. Like, Love it. She, she be cutting up. Yeah. And I just feel like it's such a good show for like women empowerment mm -hmm. too. Cause she a boss. She Cause runs she a the boss club. And she hang with the men. Yeah. And she run the club and she don't play no games. Yeah. And she's strict. She, I love. And I like dealing Somebody with a strict, with a strict. With a strict. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes i feel like every time like i always see people like oh i want more black shows y'all we have to support our content let me tell y'all if y'all ever watch real housewives y'all know eva did her thing and i feel like she's mm -hmm. so talented from her um america's next top model days i love eva i've always been a supporter of her so listen y'all need to go watch all the queens men what you're gonna do is go to bet plus and subscribe so go to bt.com plus to sign up learn more they're gonna give you all the tea all the info let me tell y'all something y'all are gonna love this show full of tea full of drama just like we like period by y'all selves or were y'all with a group it was just actually two other people in the group so it was just four of us okay and they was black too so we was having a time okay. yeah i was like hey girl it ain't nothing like linking up with us niggas. Like it you was know? giving niggas mm -hmm. in costa rica linking bitch. Up with your folks. yeah so honestly costa rica i definitely want to go again maybe i'll go on a girl's trip next time um you feel like it's a girl I don't yes know. i guess maybe because i haven't been there i guess when i think of costa rica i think of like a vacation no it definitely gives vacation but we could go back but be on some adventurous shit okay zip lining four-wheeler riding hiking like <gasps> did you see that video of that that six-year-old that fell from the zip line no oh my god it's so he crazy died. no he didn't die he survived but my best friend jasmine sent this to me shout out to her because <laughs> jasmine ain't one thing about her if she gonna hold everybody purse Oh, she not going? No, she not going. Yeah. She not getting on no roller coaster. She not zip lining. She not doing none of that shit. So she sent it to me and she was like, see, this is mm. what I be talking about when y'all be calling me scary and saying I don't want to do stuff. Look at this shit. And I was like, well, he survived. <laughs> What did you die? But did you die though? <laughs> but yes, girl, it was like a it was a six year old and he was zip lining. Mm -hmm. I think obviously with his parents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um he ended up the the thing ended up snapping. snapping. Ooh. Mm. And he failed, but he ended up surviving. Though. I'm not gonna lie, we wanted to go propelling down a waterfall. I am scared of heights, but I'm the type of person I'm gonna. I'm adventurous as fuck. Was that your first time ziplining? Oh, we didn't go ziplining because we, oh. we woke up too late. We okay. woke up too late, but so we just did the hiking and we did the four wheeler riding. But next time, like. Like I said, he's very adventurous and likes to be outside, and I feel like I am too. Mm -hmm. So I finally found somebody I can do like real outdoors real outdoorsy yeah. shit so i'm really like i'm really finna like turn up like mm -hmm. we got we, we plan our next trip i'm so excited about but yeah costa rica was a time i would definitely go back with my girls you know the girl you gonna zip blind and four wheeler ride i don't okay <laughs> <laughs> four wheeler yes for okay. sure zip i've zip lined before yeah now i mean i haven't done it through the jungle but mm -hmm. i've done it before yeah, it, was yeah. actually, it was actually one of our group exercises like trust exercises okay. one of our communications classes uh -huh. in college okay which is so crazy yeah. yeah so i mean i've done it before i don't know if i need to do it again okay I'm that's fair where it's like sometimes when i do something one time you don't need to I do don't it again know if i need to do certain things again i could just say i did it but i would definitely go for wheeler riding for sure yeah i think but you know what's crazy about atving it's scarier than people think it is because you kind of slipping and sliding like that mud is gonna scare you yeah like i went i did the atvs in jamaica and the atv in um costa rica was way better mm -hmm. like i was mud and bitch i was literally covered in mud mm -hmm. but we also like we were just moving around we stayed at the beach and then we moved into like you know the more city area but mm -hmm. it was a time highly recommended yes it seemed like you had a lot of fun mm -hmm. and you ain't had no service all weekend good i was tired of the folks and i got some good peen i know that's why right. i already knew that oh girl yeah. and then i said did she do she got her phone on do not disturb i didn't even have to have it on do not disturb because y'all wasn't disturbing me and my dick bitch <laughs> 
baby couldn't J jesus couldn't have disturbed me bitch <laughs> i was having a time i was like damn i feel sorry for the neighbors girl i, I know they was like help her for the birds help her the oh there was iguanas everywhere <laughs> you felt sorry for the iguanas they was they was watching bitch <laughs> They was like this. Mm, we ain't seen this before. I am weak. They ain't never had no guests like that before, bitch. We well, bitch. Had, and we did the floating breakfast. Oh, yeah. I, that's why I said, baby. But Tom was had, baby. Well, I'm glad you had a good time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, speaking of AKs. Yes. This is giving very much tropical. Is it? It's giving me tropical. So, Ty, I need to know what we drinking. Okay. Mm. Because it's kind of giving pina colada. Yes. But, like, elevated pina yes, colada. very much I like so. It. I like it. So, my inspiration was, like, a key lime pie. Mm -hmm. So, what we use, we use that LS liqueur, which is a cream-based liqueur. has a little bit of coconut in it. Mm -hmm. We mm. added some lime juice and some pineapple juice. And then I added Drea and Lex's Spirits of Choice, so tequila or vodka. Mm. And then I added some, I took, like, some granola mm. and, like, crunched it up. And that's, that's what's what on the rim. It. Yeah. Oh, I've been chewing it. That's what's on the rim to kind of give it, like, that key lime you know, a little touch to it. It's definitely giving key lime. It's good, yeah. girl. So I call this one Lex P got a man. Ooh, okay. period. Do she? Lex P got a man at home. Lex P got a man at home. At home. <laughs> and he's so good to me. I'm sorry that. Period. That's what she was, you know how good some dick is to be apologizing to people? I want that dick that got me like, I'm sorry for you, bitch. No, but. She being petty though. She was. I'm, I'm sorry so that bad. your man left you alone. Your man ain't home. <laughs> she was petty for that mood. But I mean, it was a good song. I can, I'm gonna sing it to somebody one day. I can't <laughs> sing it to yo because your man be at home, bitch. <laughs> um, but yes, y'all make sure if you haven't tried the LS cream, y'all go to the website. It's in the yes. link below. It's a black owned liqueur cream liquor you're gonna absolutely love it i'm telling you put this in your coffee get your day started mm -hmm. with it make a little you know uh alex p's got a man you can make whatever you want it is so good yeah and i'm telling y'all make that switch over that's what i was gonna say it's like to me cream liquor is so versatile i yes. think a lot of the time whenever people think of it you only think of like espresso martinis mm -hmm. or you think of like you know putting it in your coffee but obviously as you can see it's so many different things that you could do with it get creative mm. like maybe that's something we should do like maybe people should like do a contest and like see who can come up with a good drink with the best drink with that ls be yeah, yeah, but on the details y'all need to get y'all some ls though like lex said it's black owned and the only way that we gonna start seeing our black owned brands at bars and in liquor stores if we start requesting it so y'all know we're gonna put the link in the bio and you know make sure you find where some ls is because baby in your area i and took get it you some. i took that shit to costa rica you know i checked my little bag mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. turn turn mm -hmm. turn you know i slid in this little you know sliding a little coffee in the morning mm. on the wake up on the wake up baby okay Go ahead and get into this first topic. Okay, so for the first topic, I, you know, it's so funny because we be having like breaks in between recording sometimes. So I'll like put stuff in my notes because I know I want to talk about it, mm -hmm. but then I'll forget like what prompted me to want to discuss this. Mm -hmm. So I had in my notes, men never stop dating. Right. And I feel like the reason that I wanted to talk about this is because for real though, niggas don't never stop dating. Of course. Like until they 100% sure about you mm -hmm. or think that you the one and then, you know, even then, sometimes they, might still they still don't stop dating. Right. Um, I just think niggas never stop dating. Like women, we have the tendency to like, oh, I like him. I like this one nigga. And you put all your eggs mm -hmm. in one basket. Even if y'all not in a relationship or even if y'all not committed to each other, you've like completely stopped your dating process because you like this because you like this one specific person and i don't know i think it's a lot to be it's a lot that we can learn from men you know we two different species yes. for sure come from, come from two different worlds but one thing i really genuinely admire about men at least all of the men that i know most of the men that i know if niggas ain't happy 
they gone. Mm. They leaving. Right. Us as women, we will still. We be trying to ride or die, yes, stick it out, hold it down. It out. We be trying to hold it down. Or like we be afraid to move on. Or, you know, you feel like you too old. You been with this nigga for 15 years. Now you in your 40s. You like, oh, I'm too old to move on. Or you might not be that financially stable. And he you been taking him. care of you. Mm. Oh, I need him. I can't start over. It's too late. Niggas gonna leave. Niggas gonna leave. That's a fact. Even if they not financially stable, they gonna go sleep on another bitch house. Hey. They gonna leave though. They gonna leave. They leave. This is what I have to say about that too. I feel like for one, that says a lot about the dating pool though. Mm. Because honestly, I used to have a roster in my 20s. I used to always have a roster. Mm. It's hard to find more than one nigga I like though. It's mm -hmm. very hard. So sometimes I end up dating one person because I can't find nobody else. Mm -hmm. It ain't a lot of options out here. For a woman like me, no kid, making money, funny, ass fat, pussy good. Mm -hmm. Don't get me started on this mouth now. Don't get started. Okay. I believe you. But what I'm saying, <laughs> what I'm saying <laughs> is it be hard because it's like when you have standards and you're dating, it's harder for you to keep dating. Mm -hmm. A lot of these niggas, let's keep it real, they don't be having standards. So it's easy for them to keep dating until they find the one. Because they don't give a fuck. We always said men fuck cement if it's wet. Carlos told us that's not true, though. Yeah, maybe for Carlos, because Carlos has access to different types of women. Mm -hmm. We're talking about a man who was in the 1%. Mm -hmm. The one percentile, okay? That's true. You cannot say what Carlos's experience is. I mean, look who he's dating now, Bree. Bree is a one percenter, okay? So their dating experiences are gonna be different. If we're talking about the average person, yeah, it's gonna be like, okay, it's easy for them to date because their standards are loose and all over the place. So I sometimes feel like, yeah, that's cool for men to keep dating, but I'm sorry. I'm not gonna keep dating around and have five men on my roster just to have five men on my roster. Now, if I'm dating a guy and I like him and he cool, but we not exclusive yet and another guy comes along, hmm, I'll give him a chance. You know, you can take me get a little oyster, a little, little crab leg. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I kind of disagree. I feel like not. I feel like it's more so to do with like the standards that you have for yourself, like and knowing your worth. Right. I think that that's why, if anything, I think sometimes men kind of be like knowing they worth more than us as women, and that's why they move around. Mm. That's not not because they don't have no standards, but because they like okay, like no, this not good enough for me. I'm right. leaving. Right. But a lot I of think times us that, as women, we be knowing too much credit too, though. A lot of times they don't be thinking like that. I don't. The thing is, as I get older, I really be trying to get to a point to where I don't say what I think like men think because I'm not a man. Right. That's what and I'm saying. Neither, neither one of us are. So it's like, I don't think I'm giving them too much credit. I can only go off of what the people I have conversations with tell me who are men. Right. Because we're you're around different type of men now. I don't think so. Yeah. I think that I have... I, we're not only specifically talking about people that I'm dating. I feel like if it comes, Oh, no, I'm not talking about men that you're dating. Yeah, I feel like if it comes to down, even to my friend groups, like, I feel like I have different... I have men in my life who do different things for a living. Right. Who are all on different levels. But I can only go based off of, like, the things that guys be telling me how they feel. So mm -hmm. I'm trying to get to a point to where I'm like, oh, like, we're giving them too much credit. Because if they say that this is what it is, how are we going to say it's any different? Because we're women. I mean, I, it's not... I guess I just see, like... The, the proof is in the pudding. Like I said, I do see men that are very picky and they feel like, okay, you know what? I deserve more, so I'm move around. But I do see men who, who just do shit just to do it because she fine and she got some good pussy. I want to so see what her see, pussy Maybe them low fuck. vibrational niggas, I don't be having them around me. I mean, I don't have them around me, but I, I see it happening. No, I I'm see, not saying you, know you have them yeah, around yeah, yeah. you. I'm just saying like that's, that's not something that I've ever really seen. Like mm -hmm. I feel like I've never really just had male friends who just be out here just fucking with mad bitches just because. I mean, but we know it, it be happening because we've talked about this before like sometimes women don't be having shit going for themselves except you know you gotta have a baby to have your way you gotta fuck with this nigga to have your way you're not having your way by yourself so you do things that are low vib vibrational so a nigga gonna move around because he knows like okay this woman is starting to re require too much this girl not gonna require me to take her on no trip she not gonna require me to take her to dinner she just wanna be around the gang so that's what I'm saying I, I see where you're coming from but a lot of men, they don't, they're not dating like that. They're not dating like, oh, I'm going to go find better. They're like, okay, I'm just going to move to the next bitch. There is nothing because on this think, earth. Cause because I men, look, there's no, you know what? You can ask a man, what's better than good pussy? New pussy. They curious like that. But I also, they want to try it. I also don't think. Craig, like, yeah. <laughs> 
They want to see what it's hitting for. I also think that men don't really date to find better, though. Most of them, like, the ones who ain't shit, who really want you for what you have and are trying to use you, yeah. But I think that, in hindsight, most men don't really date to find better because they're the provider. So they just want the woman who is going to be, like, peaceful. Yeah. Who they really love and can fuck with and can vibe with. Who not going to stress them out. Mm -hmm. Who do bring other things to the table outside of money because we always say when yeah i do feel like men value women who get it on their own and they do treat you a little different but in reality niggas don't be giving a fuck about that shit they don't treat them different at all you I, said they don't no men don't treat just because you got money they don't care especially oh no yeah money. yeah 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 that's yeah. what i'm saying so i don't know yeah i feel like like i said i agree now i do agree with you we should if you're dating i don't care how much you like this man unless he says hey we're exclusive I fuck with you. You fuck with me. We're not dating other people. Keep your options open. Keep your options open. Like you said, I do admire that. Like they keep their options. Now, it may not be for the right reasons that they're keeping their options open, but they definitely keep their options open. I know for me now at this point in my life, I'm looking for something serious, a partner. I feel like you should navigate your life. Life is not meant to be navigated by yourself. This shit is hard. You need a partner. You need somebody who you can confide in, who you can lay down with at the end of the day and be like, oh my God, this was my day. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like you need a person to help you navigate through this shit because it's fucked up. But so I date with intentions and I make my intentions clear. Sometimes, no, well not a lot of times men don't date like that. They just be like, you know, you know, it's cool. It's cool. So there I are men like that. that. There are men that date with intention. I'm not saying all men are like that, but I feel like for the most part, men never stop dating because a lot of times, even in their 20s, you know, niggas ain't trying to settle down. You can find a woman that's ready to settle down in her 20s. Yeah. Men never stop dating because, oh yeah, you cool and I fuck with you, but I'm a, I want to see what she be hitting for and I want you to wait for me. But we're also nurturers. I feel like that's the thing about women too. Like you be so scared to hurt a nigga feelings. It's like, oh, I like him. I don't want to hurt his feelings. So like... I'm going to just stick with him or oh, I don't want to. I mean, seriously. Though, I know. I'm a relating because that was me. Us being nurturers, we can't help it. We be so afraid to hurt niggas' feelings when in reality, sometimes I feel like if you break up with a nigga or you tell a nigga y'all want to be with him, he probably ain't going to care as much as you think he will. Uh, I'll say this. I walked on eggshells about moving on from my last situation because I was so scared. I didn't want to hurt his feelings. Then I started feeling like, oh, I want to shit on him. And then I started feeling like, you know what? I just want you to be happy and move on because that's what I've done. So for me, it was like, I I did feel that oh my god i don't want to hurt his feelings because i care about him but it's like okay bitch start caring about yourself though yeah. you're so unhappy mm -hmm. like you're so unhappy like girl do what makes you happy and that's what you said earlier like sometimes men are selfish they're gonna do what makes them happy women we tend we to think not about our, everybody else we think about everybody else first and we put our happiness last and that's why we end up in these fucked up situations you know what i'm saying so i agree men never stop dating and women we shouldn't stop dating either but i also feel like if everybody dated with standards and things on their level maybe dating would be fun again let's date that's our goal that's my goal let's make dating fun again mm -hmm. like it should be a time mm -hmm. like you should be having the time of your life i don't be worried about the simple shit and the stupid shit but I also don't have a person who's bringing drama to my front door all the time mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying like date people who like who actually like you it also don't that's yeah that's what I was gonna say it's cause it's not even about drama it's just about dating somebody who really fuck with you really fuck with you cause it's like I truly believe you can love somebody and not like them cause it's like family sometimes you I, you love like I love my cousin I don't like that bitch mm -hmm. I would prefer her to stop calling me but I love her. Mm. It's the same thing with your partner. I felt like I was in love, like he was in love with me, but I don't felt like he liked me. Mm. How could you not like me, nigga? Me? Girl. But I had to realize that, but that's what I'm saying. That's why dating wasn't fun for me. And I was like, okay, this is not enjoyable because it's like, damn, I'm dating somebody that loved me, but this nigga do not like me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, that's another thing with dating. It's like, you gotta know your cue, you know? You gotta know when it's time to exit stage. How left. about a round of applause? Mm -hmm. What old girl said? Standing. Rihanna? Yeah. She did say that. She, sometimes you gotta take that motherfucking bow. You gotta leave. You gotta know when to bow out gracefully. Oh my God. And I did not bow out gracefully. That's okay. I left with a bang, You live bitch. and you learn, though. Oh, he, gonna, he, he still feeling me right now. I left with a bang. Yeah, but see, that's the thing. You don't never know if he is, though. Oh, he is. I told you what he did. I think that he's a little... 
That's a different topic for a different time. I think he's also a little narcissistic. Oh, I think he do things little. for his own pleasure too, though. Oh, it's it's not a little. It's a lot. Yeah, I think he do things for his own pleasure. Mm -hmm. Narcissistic people, you kind of got to watch them. Because yeah. it's like, you be thinking. But then, girl, I don't know. It's maybe more, It was like, you yeah. know what it is, though? I feel like with him, it's not the fact that he misses me. I really think he just is mad that he doesn't have access to me anymore. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's a little narcissistic. Yeah, it's not about me. Like, oh my God, I'm going to miss... Her so much. He doesn't miss his picking up the phone and be able to call me and say jump and I yeah, say how he, he he missed the fact that he had access to you and now he's like no longer available to that access. I mean he couldn't get it if he paid. Yeah. Well. Like you're not as accessible to him as you once was. And I feel like that's something that niggas don't like. And that's another thing when women that women be having to realize too. Mm -hmm. You have to really sit and ask yourself like so a nigga really miss you for real or like is he really upset or is he just like missing the access missing or missing the, the fact that he can control and miss missing that ass niggas be missing the pussy if that pussy hit oh so niggas gonna always miss they best eater i know that nigga hurting oh. he said man she in cabo eating a oh and i was gobbling it up bitch I, and he know he know i'm a big gobbler and he knew I was out there gobbling it up. And you was on shroom, so you was really gobbling. Man, <laughs> call me a turkey, bitch. It's giving Thanksgiving in that motherfucker. Gobble, gobble. It was going down. You are so annoying. I'm telling you. But no, that's fake, though. Yeah. I mean, niggas don't like, I say, we say this all the time. Niggas don't like losing their best Nobody either. do. I don't like losing mine. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I didn't lose my best either. I gained a new one. <laughs> oh, fake. Mm-hmm. But okay. I'm just saying, you know, we all been there before. We all been there before. When you was younger, you was yeah, like, damn. damn. You think you ain't never going to find, but you know what? I One will thing say about this. it, it's always another eater. The, hello, and that's the moral of this topic. Just if you're not happy, if you're not getting what you deserve and what you feel like you need, move on. I'm telling you, I know in the moment it hurts because that was me all last year. I'm like, oh my God, I'm not going to, nobody's ever going to love me or make me feel like this. Nobody's ever, girl, stop lying to yourself. Move on. Mm -hmm. It's always somebody out there that's going to treat you better and make you happy. And I feel the same way. Like, don't get me wrong. I like my new situation. I'm having a ball. But if it don't work out, hey, it's going to be somebody else out there ready for <laughs> big me. I thought you was about to say big me. Big me. Okay. Big T. Okay. Me and Garfield. Period. It's a family affair. So What's up, y'all? It's your girl, XP. And it's your girl, Dre Nicole. And I'm here to tell y'all about stitchfix.com. Now, y'all know one thing about me. If you've been watching the episode since day one, y'all know I do not always be putting that thing on. I can't really dress like that. But as of recently, they've been liking my fits. Mm -hmm. Y'all like, you like my style. You like the way I walk. Let me tell you why. I go to stitchfix.com. They give you a personal stylist and they tell you exactly what to put on. I'm telling you, they have access to extra small up to 3XL. You're going to be looking real nice. And you can try your pieces on before you buy them. Mm -hmm. That's the best thing I love about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you don't keep have what to you keep. love and then you can send what you don't like back. Right. But if you no keep. No commitment. No commitment. But if you keep everything in your fix, you get 25% off. Mm -hmm. but what I'm saying is they get to know your personal style so I'm gonna tell you nine times out of ten you gonna like what they see you don't like it. you know what I'm saying so the girls always be like oh let what you got on this little this y'all be thinking I got on designer all the time I'm telling you I go to stitchfix.com and I get my fits together so what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to stitchfix.com backslash poor minds for 25% off mm -hmm. stitchfix.com backslash poor minds. Like if you got a trip coming up, anything, a birthday, or you just want to start dressing different, you want to switch up your style. This is your opportunity to get a personal stylist yes. for a discounted rate. It's not just access to celebrities no more. We giving it to everybody. Yes. And they'll create a wardrobe specifically curated for you and your style. Mm -hmm. Get on it. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, XP. And it's your girl, Dre Nicole. And Miami, we coming to turn up. I'm excited. I'm excited, too. We've been long overdue for a Miami show. Mm -hmm. And I can't wait to see y'all. It's the perfect way to kind of, I guess, end the summer. Because the summer going to almost be over. And it's like... But August 13th, yeah. we're going to be in Miami. Miami and Prop. Show doors open at 7. 
show starts at 8. Yes, and I'm telling y'all, look, this is right before my birthday, too. So y'all know I'm finna be lit. And it's turning lit. that. Ooh, we I'm finna, I'm finna put it on for Miami. I'm telling y'all, listen, August 13th, doors open at 7, show starts at 8. Miami Improv. Y'all, please do not miss this show. Y'all know we're gonna have people popping up, rolling up on us. Miami, it's gonna be fun. Welcome to Miami. Period. So I'm Miami. That's what the old people used to say, be there or be queer? What was this that getting jiggy with it? Alright, alright. Now it's time to get into the second topic. For the second topic, I've been reading this book, y'all. Like, well, not reading, because I really like to listen to audiobooks. Mm hmm. It's just easier for me because, like, I like to, like, listen to stuff while I'm working out. And I don't really like to listen to music because music, I don't know. Music, when I'm working out, don't really motivate me. Shit, me. I'll be in there. I don't know this bitch with QP. QP. No, yeah. QP ski. I'll be on that whole list. No, yeah. I feel like if I'm in, like, an environment, like, if I'm, like, at a class or something and they okay. played it over the speaker, then cool. But, like, when it's just me by myself and I'm trying to lock in, like, I really like to listen to, like, motivational messages and stuff. Oh, well, queen. Yeah. So I've been reading this, listening to this book called Don't Believe Everything That You Think. Mm -hmm. And y'all, it's like a really good book. It's by Joseph Wynn. Okay. And I, I haven't completely finished reading it yet, but like I only have like 37 minutes left, so I'm almost done. Mm -hmm. And it's basically teaching you the difference of like thoughts and like thinking mm -hmm. so like thoughts are things that's inevitable like you gonna have thoughts pop up in your head or whatever you can't help that like it's gonna happen. me being like what if i punch you in the face right now? yeah i can't like, control it's a that thought. it's a thought but me. but thinking is when you really overanalyze your thoughts so like you think about something, but now you overanalyzing it and you thinking hard about it and you coming up with all these different scenarios in your mind and stuff. And that's really like the root of us as humans, like all of our unhappiness mm. and like stress and stuff. Yes. Because you're always overthinking things. And so the book just basically like it's kind of teaching you we all have more control over our thinking than we think. Right. We do. Because as soon as you having like as soon as you think about something and then you start overthinking it, you can literally just stop yourself. Right. So I kind of just wanted to talk about like overthinking because I think me and you are both Ooh bad overthinkers. So that's why I really one of the main reasons that I started reading this book because I'm really trying to like apply it to my life. Yeah. And I've realized too every time that I get in a space to where I start like. I think about something or I have a thought and then I start to overthink about it. Mm -hmm. I just try to stop myself in mm -hmm. my tracks and start thinking of something else. Right? Yeah. Well, you know, I'm big on like energy and like manifesting things and things like that. So I feel like with me, I get bad with that. Sometimes I start having like a really bad thought that I can't control it. Yeah. And I'll be like, okay, but then what if this happens? Then this, this, and that. I, and it's crazy that you said it because I literally stopped myself. I'm like, okay, I'm not going to think about that. I'm going to think about this. I'm going to think about a good thing. Mm -hmm. And so let me overthink positively. So I've started to kind of train my mind to overthink positively because, bitch, I already have bad intrusive thoughts. I think the worst shit all day, every day. Not even like, I just be thinking shit and I be saying it. Like, oh my God, what, a, what would this person do if I just did this? or what? Because I just be wanting to know how people will react mm -hmm. to certain things, but I don't, of course, act on it. Like, I remember in the comments, remember when we had 19 keys on? I was like, what would you do if I snatched your hat off right now? Yeah. Everybody was like, why would you say that? I was like, I, right. just, I just wanted to know. <laughs> but, yeah. I mean, you can't control your intrusive thoughts. No, you can't. Con you, you literally can't control cannot control that. your thoughts. You can just only control how you think about your thoughts. Yeah, and I think everybody has intrusive thoughts. This is the this is why I figure out people are like, oh my god, in the comments, they're like, let what's wrong with you, let why you be saying that shit. I think I think more. I think some people have them more often than others. Yeah, I have intrusive thoughts because I don't really have intrusive thoughts like a lot. I have like intrusive thoughts that be like some crazy ass shit. Yeah. And sometimes I just be saying it. Like that's why they be like, why would you say that? Why would you say that? Why mm -hmm. wouldn't I say it though? At least I'm saying it and not acting on it. Mm -hmm. Now that, some people can't control their intrusive thoughts because they think it and they actually do it. But as far as my yeah. thought process, I felt like I used to be this like, woe is me ass person. I used to be like, oh my God, he's, this Drea is mad at me and this, this is gonna happen. This, and I was like, you know what? Stop overthinking shit. Just calm down, be in this moment, and do what you need to do to fix whatever issue that you have. Yeah. Do what you can to fix the issue, and whatever the outcome is, you have to accept that, no matter what it is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think that you have, like, the best possible human experience when you, like, 
stop trying to control everything. Relax. And relinquish control. Relinquish. But, but that's but that's, that's a good word. <laughs> thanks. Mm. But that's um easier said than done. Cause I think us as people, we always want to be in control. Yeah. You always want to control the outcome. You always want to control the scenario. Like it's just something that's innate. I think we do it without trying. That's two words in 30 seconds. Yeah. Innate. Okay, so side note. Sorry mm -hmm. to get off topic. I learned a new word today. What? So I was watching Alice in Wonderland. Mm -hmm. Mind you, Alice in Wonderland to me has always been a horror film. Absolutely terrifying movie. Why? It's just terrifying. Like, okay. it's frightening. Maybe I need to go rewatch it. I haven't watched it. I mean, it's rated PG, so it's not bad. But if you really think about it, it's terrifying to think you're in a dream, but then it ends up being real fucking life. That's horrible. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's how it kind of being on shrooms feel like. Yeah. Like, you're like, is this a dream? No, it's real life. Oh, yeah, you've I'm done, you've, like, you've really done a great job of, like, I'm never doing shrooms. Yeah. Sorry. I'm not the shroom salesman. Yeah. But uh, I, I learned a new word today. Uh, bequeathing. Bequeath. So it's basically when you leave somebody something after you die. So like, oh, will you bequeath me this watch? Mm. Will you? Oh, <laughs> you was really asking yes. me that. Yes. Who else are you going to leave it to? Um, probably my, my kid. If you don't have a kid, like, I'm talking about right now. Probably my little sister. All right. She don't even know what a Rolex is. She don't know when that But is. honestly, when I first heard the word, I was like, I thought it was something. I was like, damn, they get nasty. Because it sounds like I bequeathed on this nigga. And he liked it. But it wasn't that. I don't even know. See, I, that's why when I hear words. I don't like that word, though, because bequeath sounds too much like queef. That's what I thought. And I wouldn't want no nigga to queef on me. I might like it. For I feel like, no, it's not a fart. If a fart comes through your butt, so we queef through our vagina hole, so that would be something that comes through the peen hole. But then you do queef, because like when you fart, if you sitting down, it go through the front. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't never farted through the front, bitch. Swear to God. I know that. I was just like, like I, was, I, was say, I know that big coochie. <laughs> No, bitch. I'm You're saying. You're lying. You lying, You're bro. About everybody be sitting down. No, but that's not what? everybody, but women. Okay. That has happened to everybody what? before. You what? be sitting down and you fart and, and it come up through the front. The front. That's still a fart, though. Just because it come through them little lips don't mean it ain't no fart, bitch. It's a queef now. Uh -uh, it transitions. It's not a queef. It transitions. It don't transition, <laughs> bitch. Not a trans fart. <laughs> it transforms. <laughs> not a trans fart. It's a trans it identifies the them, they. <laughs> Girl, be for real. <laughs> a fart cannot it's not that it, I mean cause now it's coming no, from a different place it's not coming from a different place bitch I can never come from a different place still a nigga I don't know you cannot change what a fart is I don't like that word though well I thought it meant I don't a, think I'm ever gonna a, add that to my penises, vocabulary I'm sorry guys in the building do penises fart no Queef. No, penis can't have a little air let me in like what kind of what kind of I'm sorry y'all I just don't know I I feel like a, I feel like if a penis queef though it would be like like a snake like a move your body like a snake mo or maybe a pop uh uh I feel like the lips the not the lips the little the edge lips. Have, you know the edge of it would have to go in and pop out let me pop off. <laughs> I do want to see a penis queef. I don't want to see that. I do. I'm, I'm cool. You know I what swear. It is, I'm good. If I, I'm good on never seeing that for the rest of my life. I would want to see I it like it after we far. got done. Like, yeah, I woke that nigga out. Like, he like this. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I imagine the queef yeah. to be. That is what I imagine like a man queef to be. Yeah. Like, it's, it's tired. Yeah, like, it's like, like you did your big one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like it's hoofing. Yeah. Hoofing. I wish they did do that. But that's what I thought it meant at first. I was like, ooh, Allison won the game. It might you just not have, you best well, you just <laughs> might not have met one that queef. I need to meet a queef and penis. Mm -hmm. Let us know. Anybody out there, do you have a queef and penis? Or have you ever seen a penis queef? I think it's possible. I would like to know. Anything is possible, bitch. It's possible. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now we gonna get into... The bed. Hey. The bed. Ow. The bed. Bow. 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 That's a bop. Mm -hmm. mm. So I want to talk about today because I feel like, you know, we're all grown. We're all adults here. Everybody masturbates. When was the last time you masturbated? 
Be honest. Be honest. Why would I not be honest? Probably like two weeks ago. Two weeks? I've been on my period. <laughs> not that you in my business. I mean, some people do that on their period still. Yeah, I don't do that on my period. I be cool. You know, they say that makes your period f and quicker. Really? Mm -hmm. I mean, my periods don't really last that long now. Oh, okay. So why did you wait two weeks? Just out of curiosity. Because you be fucking. Nope. Yeah, but it also just, I don't know, masturbating is not something that's just always on my mind. Like, if I'm going to, like, what I could do to get myself off first, I'm mm. going to go have sex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, if it's not available to me, like, if I'm not having, if I'm going through a dry spill. You're going to be beating at me. Yeah, but I'm good right now, so okay. I, just, I don't be masturbating, like, like that. often. Well, baby, my vibrators be tired of me. Really? You remember how I said the penis was like... My and vibrators be doing that when I walk in the room. I believe you, because I know. It be, oh, how you know? Girl, because I know you. Okay. So today I wanted to talk about masturbating to self-made videos versus watching porn. Mm -hmm. Now, do you and your partner, do y'all record yourselves doing the deed? Possibly. Possibly. It's a yes, I know. Maybe. Okay. So do you, if you have in the past, we didn't even got to talk about your partner now in the past. Have you recorded yourself having sex? Yeah. Do is it more so for them or do you like watch the videos and like get off to it or is it just like a memory thing and you just like to look back at it it's or a little bit of both yeah I don't know like I like to watch porn but I I think I've said this before I'm very specific with the type of porn that I like to watch mm -hmm. so I don't know sometimes if I'm trying to like masturbate mm -hmm. I want to watch me and my man yeah. Like if you want want to take your time with it mm -hmm. and get in the moment, but if and you I don't like to do a quick little one two before you go to lunch real quick. You if I'm porn? trying to do a quick little one two, I, I don't know. Like I have to be in the mood to watch porn. And the funny thing about me is I only watch porn when I stumble across it. How do you stumble across porn? Because what are you <laughs> looking at to stumble? Who do you follow? You really want to know? No, actually I don't because I never stumble I across stumble porn. Across how oh. easily it be popping up on my timeline that's why i asked who do you follow because i never come across porn on my timeline very rarely i see it all the time mm, mm. well i'll say for me mm, i've recorded myself um having sex of course in the past but i never really cared to watch it like it wasn't like a thing but i like it now and like I'm, I'm the same way with you. Like if I'm trying to take my time and I'm alone, you know, I want to get a little romance going. I actually like to, you know, watch myself and get my rock off. Yeah, if I'm trying to do like a quickie, I could do that off my mind. Oh, your mind. See, you good. I feel like my mind is very like I have a very strong mind that can like go to the places See, that I need I to go too. to right then. But it takes me a long time. Like if I'm trying to go off imagination, sometimes I'll quit. I'm like, damn, it ain't getting vivid. It's enough. going back to what we was just talking about because you're thinking too much. Yes, I'm thinking. You just too gotta much. have a thought. Would you watch and a 3D porn? Ruby. That's like, a little too. No, that's a little too. And they real. have like going to the theater. You know how they like the water. Like if you go to the water, like a woman squirting and the squirts in your face. No. Whoa. <laughs> and then when she riding, the, the chairs move. Getting hit from the I don't want nobody squirting in my face. But it's not real squirt, it's water. I know what you're saying, but I don't even want, like, no, I'm good on just watching it. I'm good on the visual. I don't need you know that what? experience. You can actually make a lot of money from that. Right. Like, if you did a, a, a video of you, like, masturbating and squirting, and it was like a 3D experience, mm -hmm. squirt with Drea, I'd go watch it. I know you would, but you can see it in person. <laughs> I I'll squirt on you for free. <laughs> What did you put in this hell <laughs> <laughs> You can get the real what? thing. <laughs> what? What kind of what kind of offer is that? <laughs> please, please. I don't want you to swear on me. You said you were watching. I just please. said I'm here. No thanks, but no thanks. I'm saying, but you could make some money from that. Oh. Damn. Thank you. Sheesh. They should do that as an OnlyFans experience. Like you can be giving people too many good ideas. I'm telling you, that's a good idea. idea. Like, have you ever seen a movie in four? Have y'all ever went to a 4D movie? Y'all went have. to a 4D movie. Yeah. And it's like, you know, so imagine they did that with like porn. Mm -hmm. But you can't beat off in the theater. Mm -hmm. Like it's just supposed I mean, to niggas be fucking in the theater. Why they can't beat no, off? You be fucking in the theater. <laughs> First of all, I have not fucked in the theater in a long time. It's been at least 10 years. I don't believe you. I swear. It's, it really has. It's been at least 10 years. I don't believe it. 
I feel like when the Little Mermaid came out, you was freaking. No, who was gonna have part of your world? Okay, who gonna have sex at the Little Mermaid? Because you, no, you competitive. You like Ariel ain't the only one that's wet, nigga. That's some First shit you'll say. Bitch, that is you. You're competitive. I don't be giving a fuck. Let's have a squirt contest. Ooh. Who can squirt to <laughs> You. I feel like you gonna win. <laughs> your pussy got more power. <laughs> this pussy too got power. It's bigger. <laughs> I feel like it can shoot out more. It can hold more. I don't want to talk about this anymore. <laughs> Ouch. My coochie gonna be like, <laughs> oh, I got that super soaker. <laughs> I got that little baby game. You got the little one that's on the emoji. <laughs> okay, let's move on. So oh. me, my vote is I definitely like watching self-made porn because you can make it tailored to what you want. Mm. You know, like I feel like you and your partner can do the things that you actually like to watch. Do you ever be watching but like, oh, I done made some videos where I went back and watched them and I was like, you nasty. Oh, no. I, yeah. I be embarrassed sometimes. No, and sometimes it, I, be, I be embarrassed about the stuff that I say. Me too. I be like, why did I say that? Uh -uh. And then don't let the nigga want you to send it. Then I really be, I be like, no, I don't want to send it. Girl, you be sending it. You be like, okay. I mean, eventually, but I be like, no, stop. <laughs> like, so you always let them record with your phone? Yeah. Always. Mm -hmm. Always. I guarantee. For okay. sure, every yeah. time, mm -hmm. every time. Ooh, except for this one time. Then that's a story for another. another I day. do feel like I just hope that people from my past have everything deleted off their phone because it was getting too wild. It was getting too loud. <sighs> okay, so let me know what y'all think. Do y'all like watching the self-made ones versus porn? I personally like the self-made videos mm -hmm. a lot better. I do too. A lot like better. Like I said, I have to stumble upon porn to watch it, and I know you keep saying how, but like you yeah. be on Twitter, it's easy to stumble upon. It's not porn. though because I have like it's easy it's for me. Like, Don't I, you follow Cookie? Yeah, but I, I mean, I have her muted just because it's a lot of stuff I don't want to see. Oh. And I go to her timeline if I do want to see something mm -hmm. I want to see. But I follow a lot. Of, I love sex workers. I follow a lot of them. But sometimes I be scrolling. I be around my family. I be out. You know what I'm saying? I don't want that just popping up on my timeline. I follow a lot of sex workers, actually, because mm -hmm. they be funny. They do be funny. They be cool. And yeah. they be telling, you know, so. But I but do I have But I like now, like, social media has made it to where, like, shit just pop up. No matter what. Yeah, it definitely don't like pop up. Like on Twitter, you'll never just be scrolling and like you'll be like looking through your comments and it'll be like tweets that start popping up from people that you don't even follow. Like Twitter yeah. is like that now. But I feel like it does go by the algorithm. Yeah. Maybe every now and then I'll have a girl pop up or like a man pop up naked, but I, I don't see people fucking. Your algorithm. I probably typed in coochie. <laughs> yeah, you definitely did. <laughs> you fucking sicko. So now we go Hashtag. get into the bop. <laughs> the bop. Hey, the bop. The bop. Bow, 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 bow. bow, bow. bow. What's your bop? I'm going to let you go first. I feel like I always go first. What's your bop? Oh, um, I had to pull it up. My bop is that uh, Young Thug and Drake song. I can't remember the name of it. Though. Oh, uh, the one from his new album? What's yes. It Oh, 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 you went? Oh, yeah. Went. Okay. I had to look it up. I'm sorry, y'all. But yes, because I thought you was going to go first. Oh, no, it's okay. But yes, y'all know I love Drake. And I haven't had a Drake bop in a long time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like, people been saying that Young Thug album is, like, not good. And I actually, I think it's as, you know, it's good. Cool. It's, I like it. It's good for where he is. Yeah. It's, I think that it did what it was supposed to do. It's not what people are used to as far as, like, what he releases, you know. Yeah. They want a little more, but... For the circumstances, I thought it was it was good. That's what I think too. I'm like, God damn, what kind of album y'all was expecting him to make? And okay, but did you see Gunna drop the video the fuck you mean? Gunna is fine. Now. I haven't seen the I have not seen the video, but I did see the photo of Gunna. And he was working out. He was hitting them weights. Gunna is fine. He Gunna is baddie. a baddie. Yes, he looks good. Like a baddie is crazy. No, Gunna is definitely giving it up. Giving what up? I don't know, but he giving something up. I'll take it. Okay. He definitely look. he looks much better. He mm -hmm. looks like he's super fit. He looks like he's healthier. He was healthier. like this. QP. QP ski. He was rolling. Now I'm not going to watch the video because I don't want to see that. Okay, my bop of the week, y'all know, I had to take it back to the Afro Bees because this is like my theme song for the year. It's called This Year Blessings. You probably heard this. Name. This Year Blessings. Yeah, yeah, I heard that. Yeah, follow, follow. Yeah, mm -hmm. I feel like that's my theme for the year. Like, I'm outside, I'm on tour. Um, 
I feel like I'm just living in my purpose this year. That's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Creating boundaries and doing what makes me happy. And I feel like that's what this song like really represents. Like everything you manifested, everything you want is here and it's only going to get better. So yeah, this year, Blessings by Victor Thompson. That's my pop of the week, Bookie Butt. Okay, Bookie Boots. Okay. Ooh, so... What you got for the item of the week, girl? So now it's time for the item of the week, y'all. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, you know, I just got off my period. And okay, no, but go ahead. Yeah, I told you that. Mm. So, damn, you got to act surprised, like how I was acting when you told me oh about Oh, my God, you just got off your period? Yes. Thank God you aren't pregnant. Thank you. So, I no longer use, like, tampons mm -hmm. or or pads or any of that i use this little cup by nixie mm -hmm. is that the cup you actually use it is it's clean though you don't you don't got to touch it but it's clean what i boil it? it every time after like so you're supposed to boil it when you finish using it and you're supposed to boil it like before let me smell it i don't think it's clean That's smell it It smells like balloons. Yeah. And that's all it should smell like. It's because it's rubber. <laughs> but it's so, as you can see, it's very clean. Well, I got lip gloss on it now. You did. It's okay. I'm not about to use it. I'm okay. Good. I'm okay. okay. So now. What do you, how do you... Okay. So this is the vagina. So you have to... Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> so that's the vagina. Mm -hmm. It makes the hole not that big. Though. Speak for yourself. <laughs> I just got back from Costa Rica. So it makes it... <laughs> My hole is dead. I need it. They come in extra, extra large. I need a 3XL, bitch. So it makes it easier to stick it in. Like, you could do it in a shower or you could do it when you're sitting on the toilet. Okay. But I prefer to do it when I'm sitting on the toilet because in a shower, I feel like it could get, like, real messy. And my shower is, like, all white. So I don't mm -hmm, like it. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, so you just squeeze it and you, like, open your legs, sit, like, all the way back and then mm -hmm. insert. Show and then me push on the vagina hole. Okay. So, like. You just push it in. Like, okay. And it sits on inside. And then it stops right here. Uh-huh. Oh, behind, okay. Behind, like, your pelvic bone. Yeah. And then it, like, covers your cervix. Got you. Yeah. So then all the blood is, like, falling in here. I so keep then, on falling. <laughs> and That's what she means. And it, and it, okay. And then it's, like, very comfortable. Like, yeah. really, it's very flexible. So you leave half of it sticking out. Oh, a little no. bit of it sticking out. Well, that's what it looked the like. Whole thing is in. Oh, the whole thing is in. I mean, so well, it's, you have no, it's nothing to stop it from falling if it fails. Right, right. But I'm saying so it's gonna sit like this. Yes, it's covering your cervix. Mm. So like all of the blood is like flowing into. It. I think my vagina and, too big for that. No, it's not. That thing gonna fall right on that. Okay. No, it's not. Okay. It's not. And then you just change it every 12 hours. So, okay. like, when I'm out and stuff. And it holds everything in there? Yes. And it's comfortable. But, I mean, you have... It depends on the flow of your of your mm -hmm. cycle. I've noticed, too, but the main reason why this is, like, my item of the week is because ever since I started using this in comparison to, like, using tampons and stuff, I feel like, number one, my cycle is lighter. And it doesn't, like, last as long. Mm. Like, so the flow is lighter. Right, right, right. And it doesn't right. last as long. I changed this. I try to change it twice a day, but I really could change it once a day. Like, if I have, like, a crazy day and I'm, like, running around and stuff. Cause it's I don't, a cute bag, too. And it comes with, like, a little travel bag mm. that can fit in your purse. So when And your purses usually be that size, so if you want to use that for a purse, you could. Period. I can. It's mm. really cute. So, yeah. So, I really, really like it. And it's comfortable. And, like, in the past, I can't remember the name of this other, like, it was, like, a server. It was a disc that I tried in the past. But I can't remember the name of it. Mm -hmm. But they said they were trying to market it like it was so comfortable. And when I say it was so uncomfortable because, like, the surrounding part was plastic. But it was, like, really, really hard. Mm. And then the middle part was, like, clear. Mm. But And they're disposable. Like, you only Oh, you them. have to throw them away. Yeah, you use them one so time. So, how do you wash that? That's what I was telling you. You just boil it. And then it all also, you boil it before you use it, and then you boil it afterwards. But in between uses, you use like a cleanser. It comes with it. You could what buy. What you be using to boil it in? <laughs> That's why you can't eat at folks' no, house. I'm not. <laughs> Bitch, I have a pot that I use just to boil. So you bought a pot when you bought it. <laughs> You no. Ain't no pot. No, but you don't got pot. I don't know about you, but you don't have pots that you don't really use. I use all my pots, bitch. I don't use all my pots. Okay. But. Even if I did, bitch, it's like the it's boiling it, so it's like clean. <laughs> not, not I'm using the well, <laughs> not the pot spaghetti. Not I'm using the pot that I be using for your rice. 
Let's move on. Oh, sorry. I got pissed. Oh, please. Oh, please. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. It came out. It please, slipped. Yes, y'all, so this is my end of the week. It's called Nixon, and I'm going to put the link in the bio. Yes, amen. Okay, so now we're going to move on to our favorite segment of the week. Pour your heart out. If you want your question answered on the show, make sure you email us at askpoorminds at gmail.com. Y'all, please keep it as short as possible. If you're a Patreon member, you get to skip the line. Um. Uh, Oh, it's, it's only okay. one question. Yeah, it's okay. okay. We can just read this one, okay? Oh, it should be over there, Dre, on your table. Okay, so I'll go ahead and start with question number one. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? No? It's okay. We I can mean, just do one. It. Yeah, okay. Hey, Lex and Drea. I'm 28, and I've been in a relationship for nine years. I love him with everything in me, and I want to marry him. But he knows I don't want to be a 10-year girlfriend, so his clock is ticking. When we first started casually dating, I had relations with someone I used to date. I didn't cheat on my man because we weren't together at the time. Fast forward a few months ago, I saw the other guy for the first time since then at his restaurant. We started talking, and he asked if I still had a boyfriend. I after that, he was applying all the pressure. This man licked my face, had his arm around my neck, asked if I wanted to run it back one more time before I get married, and said, stop drinking my water the way I was drinking before he fucks me in the bathroom. I was absolutely feeling it at the time, but I was drunk, and I told him, no, we ain't doing that. On top of that, I think we kissed in his car at the end of the night, but I don't re really remember because I was so lit. Should I spin the block for him or take my ass back in the house and stay put? Girl, take your ass take back your ass in, back the house in the house and stay put. That man gonna fuck you in the bathroom and never talk to you again. What the fuck are you talking about? See, this is why y'all. What? And what how old is he? Twenty eight. What is going on at home? Because if a man ever licked my face in public that wasn't my man, I'm going to get disgusted. I don't care if I used to talk to you or not. So you need to figure out what's going on at home for where this man licked your face in public and you was down and that pussy got hot and ready like little Caesars. I'm judging. No, I'm not. <laughs> but um, I'm just saying, yeah, go back in the house. That ain't that. Because if y'all broke up for a reason, I used to believe in spinning the block. I don't spend the block. No longer spend the block. Because if we Dang. ended, we ended for a reason. Now, sometimes love happens and it's a little different and it works out for people. But you love this man because you're the man that you were with for nine years because you still want to marry him. Spin the block for what? You don't want to be with him. You want to marry the guy you're with. I think you're just confused and bored and you need to figure out what's going on in your relationship for you to even be I don't know I'm just a my man my man like when I'm into it with somebody I don't care Same. how many years I don't care if it's been months it's been set like my last relationship we had been on and off for seven years but we were like together together last year and I was a my man my man my man my man like and it was at seven years at that point like when you in in it with somebody you fuck with them so there's something going on in her relationship i think she needs to address yeah clearly you're not like all the way invested yeah. if that's what you're thinking about and especially yeah. with with your ex like i don't know like i can more so understand maybe if you said a new person came along but right. somebody that you used today and then it already didn't work out hmm no sis but then also yeah if y'all supposed to be together and be taking each other serious and that's what you think about you also need to like reevaluate if this is where you want to be mm -hmm. so yeah so y'all know we have our voicemail segment i actually have a voicemail i want to play can i play this um because this is the craziest shit this wasn't actually a voicemail this came in my dms yeah i heard it i have to play this for the people because let me tell you niggas something y'all be scaring the hoes I was frightened when I heard this. I was too. Um, if you want to leave a voicemail, y'all make sure y'all know this is not the advice column. This is just to, you know, call us, leave a voicemail, 30 seconds to a minute. Think, get things off your chest. You know, just tell us how you feel, what's going on, what you love about the show, whatever. But this is what I got. I'm going to play this. And yeah. Hold on, wait. I have to look. Miss Ma'am, I haven't had the opportunity to slot into your universe and say hello. I just wanted you to know that I am ready, willing, and available to feed you, give you dessert, let you chew with your mouth open. You know what I'm saying? You got a little gas, let it out, girl. I'm not even afraid of that. I'm trying to see you soon, Alexis. Oh. <laughs> Let me know. 
Yeah. First of all, who the fuck is Alexis? <laughs> and let me know. He sound like Tom Joyner. That's what somebody said. Let yeah. me Tom Joyner. Tom. Well, let me just say this. This is not Tom Joyner. <laughs> First of all, they're gonna be like, "Ooh, Tom." <laughs> Time was in late. No, he knew how to radio voice. He needs to utilize it better. Is he on the radio? I hope not. He has a radio voice, but that was very creepy. Because who the fuck is Alexis? And why are you talking about you about to let her fart on you? He said, you got a little gas. That don't bother me. Obviously, he ain't been around me. Because that cast is deadly. And then I don't even like desserts. I don't eat sweets. Yeah. It was wild. It's Chew a wild time. Chew with my mouth open. That was just... I wonder what he thought when he said that he was like, yeah, she gonna, she gonna fuck with this I one. I Because every time people DM me, I don't care what you say, I always at least like it. Because I like to, you know, I didn't even like that. I left him on red, bitch. You, you ain't like it? Nope. Nope. I recorded it and sent it to everybody. Shame. 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 Back shame. Shame. He is here to be shamed. I'm not gonna put his ad out there. But yeah. Uh, if you want your uh, voicemail listen to make sure y'all call the shot line number is below anything else you got to add drea no we... but i feel like now people about to be sending us more of those because you done played it on the uh-uh, show. that's not to open a platform <laughs> to do that now bitch now listen we on tour right now so yeah. go get your tickets uh, at poorminds.com voicemail hell no hell alexis. no alexis <laughs> So, yes, make sure y'all go to poorminds.com, get y'all tickets. We're going on tour, all the cities. We come in to see y'all. Yep. Um, hit that up, musebeautycollection.com. Um, LS Cream Liquor. LS Cream. Make sure y'all, please go get this. Very fire, very tasty. Mm-hmm. Drink them up. And, uh, Todd, what's the website they can find all your stuff at? www.soulmixy.com. So, we'll see y'all next week. Bye, y'all. Bye. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Lex P. And it's your girl, Dre and Nicole. And we just wanted to come and talk to y'all and let y'all know that we do have sponsor packages available for this tour coming up. Yes, for rich or for poor, too. We do have sponsorship packages available. If you would like to be a sponsor for the live tour, all you need to do is hit us up at Drea and Lick Show at gmail.com. That's D R E A A N D L E X S H O W at gmail.com. And all of the details will be provided to you. But yes, if you want to be a sponsor, if you have a small business, if you have a big business, whatever type of business you got, we all about business. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and hit us up and we're going to send you all of the details so that you can get your business sponsored with us for Richard for Board too. Yes, and like she said, we have different packages available mm-hmm. for purchase. So make sure y'all email us, Show at gmail.com, and we'll see y'all on the road. Period. Y'all, it's your girl Lex P. And it's your girl Dre and Nicole. And I got some really good news for y'all. Yes, period, y'all. We are about to revamp our whole Patreon. Yes. We got so much new shit coming soon for y'all. Like, we about to be doing challenges. We about to be doing blogs. Mm-hmm. We really about to be dropping a lot of exclusive content for y'all. So, if one episode a week is not enough, y'all about to get some more content on Patreon. Yes, y'all be saying, oh, make the episodes longer. I need twice a week. Well, this is your opportunity to see us twice a week. And also, you kinda get, you're you going to get a look into our lives. Mm-hmm. Know us on a personal level. Mm-hmm. So make sure y'all sign up at patreon.com backslash poor mind. Sign up today. There's different tiers. So if you want audio only, you can just listen. If you want video and audio, we have that too. And also, we have a top, top tier where you get exclusive access to merch, shows, all that good mm-hmm. stuff. So go to patreon.com backslash poor minds and sign up today oh, oh so much for my happy ending oh 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 oh, 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 oh the harmony oh, oh, let's talk this over it's, it's not, not like we're dead. dead was it something i did was it something you said don't leave me hanging in the city so dead held up so high on such a breakable thread breakable thread all the things i thought i knew
And I thought we could be. Sing. You were everything, everything that I wanted. We were meant to be, supposed to be, but we lost it. All of the memories so close to me just fade away. All this time you were pretending so much for my happy ending. Totally. Oh, I'm so oh, depressed. Oh, <laughs> Going to my fucking oh, room, mom. Yeah. Shut the fuck up. Period. Totally. Fuck you. Get out mom. of my room. Mom. Get out of my fucking room.